Okay, in this video, we're gonna do number six from the 2024 Calc BC exam. So let's take a look. Uh, the Maclaurin series for a function f is given by the sum from one to infinity, n plus one, x to the n over n squared, six to the n, converges for all x in the interval of convergence. It can be shown that the Maclaurin series for f has a radius of convergence of six. All right, uh, determine whether the Maclaurin series for f converges or diverges at x equals six. Give a reason for your answer. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is plug in six. So if you plug in six, you get uh, six to the n in the numerator, six to the n in the denominator. Those cancel. You just end up with the sum of n plus one over n squared. So now it's a question of how much work do we need to show? Well, this is basically one over n and one over n diverges. So I'm going to limit compare it to one over n just to be safe. So I've set it up. I have the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus one over n squared, the series we're trying to work with divided by one over n, which is the series that we know diverges. That gives us the limit as n approaches infinity of n times n plus one, which is essentially n squared plus n over n squared. If we take the limit to infinity, this will give us one. Since we got a positive finite number, both series do the same thing. So I just need to write that up. So I'm gonna say, since the sum of one over n diverges, it's harmonic, or you could say p equals one, um, the series that we found diverges as well by the limit comparison test. And I think that's how I would handle that problem. I think that's gonna get all the points. Let's take a look at the next one. Um, it can be shown that f of negative three is uh, gonna simplify down to the sum from one to infinity, n plus one over n squared, the quantity negative one half to the n, and that the first three terms of this series sum to s3, which is negative 125 over 144. We wanna show that the absolute value of the true value minus the approximation, so the actual minus the estimate, is less than 1 over 50. So I noticed that negative 1 half to the n, and I'm thinking this is a convergent alternating series. I'm going to use the alternating series error. I'm going to uh, take a shot here because I don't want to prove that this thing decreases. I'm just going to say that it does hope that I get the credit. So uh, n plus 1 over n squared negative 1 half to the n has terms that alternate for sure. And I'm gonna say decrease in magnitude or in absolute value to zero. I didn't actually prove that. I think that's definitely true for this, um, but I could be in a little bit of trouble there. I don't think so. We'll see when the official scoring guidelines come out, but I think that that's all we're gonna need. I'm not even sure. I, I think we will need to say that it's a convergent alternating series. Um, so now the alternating series error is um, going to be at most the magnitude of the first term that we omitted, right? So if we use three terms, the absolute value of the fourth term is going to be a bound on the error. So we want to say that the absolute value of f of negative 3 minus s sub 3 is less than, we need to take 4 and plug it into this thing. So we're going to sub in 4. So that's going to give us 4 plus 1 is 5, over 4 squared is 16, negative 1 half to the fourth. So now I'm going to work this out because I've kind of heard this rumor that you're not allowed to just leave this and say this is less than 1 over 50, although it is, and kind of this breaks the rule of you don't have to simplify arithmetic, but I'm not really sure, so I'm going to do it anyway. This gives me 5 over 16 times 16, 256. 5 over 256 is definitely less than um, 5 over 250, and so it's definitely less than 1 over 50, and that's what I would do on this problem. Let's take a look at the next part. So... Uh, find the Maclaurin, no, find the general term of the Maclaurin series for f prime, the derivative of f, which means we just need to use the power rule on the nth term of f. So that's what I'm going to do on that. Um, and then find the radius of convergence of the Maclaurin series for f prime. So just the radius of convergence and just the general term. We don't need like some number of non-zero terms or anything like that. So uh, for our general term, the only variable in the general term of f is x, is x right? And it's x to the n. So the derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1. What happens is when you bring the n down, the n and the n squared in the denominator cancel, and we're going to end up with a general term that looks like n plus 1, x to the n minus 1 over n times 6 to the n. So what happened there was we use the power rule on x to the n to get n x to the n minus 1. The n from the numerator cancels with one of the n's in the denominator to leave us with just n instead of n squared, and everything else kind of stays the same. That's the general term for f prime. And now we're just going to limit, uh, I'm going to do the 
So I'm going to do the ratio test on this. I don't know. I feel like they asked the same thing in basically questions C and D. So maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I don't think so. Um, so it's going to be the limit as n approaches infinity, absolute value, the n plus first term. So every n becomes n plus one. So you have n plus one plus one is n plus two. You have x to the n plus one minus one is just to the n. You have n plus one. You have six to the n plus one times the reciprocal of the nth term. So just n, six to the n n plus one, x to the n minus one. So these always simplify really nicely. Um, if you look at it in the numerator, you have n plus two and n. In the denominator, you have n plus one and n plus one. So that's like n squared over n squared. That's just one as you go to infinity. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, you have six to the n over six to the n plus one. The six to the n's cancel and you just have a one sixth or a six in the denominator. And then x to the n divided by x to the n minus one the x to the n's cancel, you have one over x to the negative first, which becomes x to the first in the numerator. So we end up with just the absolute value of x over six. This is definitely going to converge when the absolute value of x over six is less than one. So we know that's true, which means it converges when the absolute value of x is less than six, which means we have to state what the radius of convergence is. So we did all this work and at the end you have to actually say, the radius of convergence is six. So I think that's our radius of convergence. Let's take a look at the last part of this thing, which again, I feel it's a different series, but it's basically the same thing, except they're telling you to use the ratio test, which makes me think if I were smart enough, I could have found a different way to do the previous part. Like I think they're forcing the ratio test here. Um, so let's see. So limit as n approaches infinity, it's gonna be basically the same kind of work. Every n becomes n plus one, so n plus two. Here you're gonna get x to the two n plus two because it's two n two times the quantity n plus one. And then n plus one squared, three to the n plus one times the reciprocal of the original. So n squared, three to the n, n plus one, x to the two n. Uh, now we get to do all the fun algebraic stuff where we simplify. Uh, the numerator is n plus two times n squared, which is basically n cubed. The denominator n plus one squared times n plus one, basically n cubed, that limit will be one. You have three to the n over three to the n plus one. That's just one third or a three in the denominator is left over. And then x to the two n plus two divided by x to the two n is just x squared. So this simplifies to the absolute value of x squared is less than three. So we know that this will converge uh, if the absolute value of x squared over three is less than one, which means that the absolute value of x squared is less than three. And so this, you can do all kinds of things. You can graph x squared and you can graph three. You can find the intersection that's negative root three and positive root three. Um, all that we need to do here is find the radius of convergence. So the radius, we're gonna definitely end up with the absolute value of x is less than root three. And that means our radius of convergence is root three. And that I think is the entire problem. I hope this was helpful and good luck.